It is never easy to admit that the tower you were building for yourself doesn't fit you anymore and that the only way to change things is to stop building and throw yourself off your tower. Hey you, welcome to my channel, A Year and a Day. My name is Jenny and my July did not go according to plan. The plan was simple, return from Norway, go back to my day job and then eat, sleep, repeat. But that day job had been sucking the life out of me for over a year. And sometimes all it takes is a bit of distance, a few fjords and a moment of bravery to finally realize you are 1000% done. So in July, after returning from Norway, I stopped building and threw myself off my tower, which made me feel all the feels. And I still have no clue how all of this will turn out. But I do know I don't have to have all the answers right now. I first need to regroup clear my mind and do some serious soul searching before I can properly make new plans. And even though it felt counterintuitive and selfish, I allowed myself to focus on my mental health this past month. I took a step back from my day job, set some boundaries and to prevent my mind from racing in the wrong directions, I threw in as much positive distraction as possible. There was gardening, long journaling sessions and creative projects. Let's start with some creative stuff. I had some fun with watercolors and painted the green woodpecker we spotted in Norway. I have been trying to improve my sketching and painting skills these past few years but I'm really bad at practicing every day and I often fail to take time for watercoloring. So the struggle continues. Despite that little fact, I decided to draw our wedding invitations myself. We are getting married at the end of September and I'm finalizing the design at the moment. Here's a little sneak peek. I might do a video on that process in the future, but let's get them finished first. Another little project I did in July was adding some illustrations to the fronts of my journals. Especially when I have an off day, it's low impact creative projects like this that make me feel so much better. I had fun going through the illustrations I cut out of Old Flow magazines earlier this year and picked out some favorites. It's a fun and easy way to customize standard notebooks and I love the result. Let's move on to YouTube and some other entertaining stuff. I did a lot of yoga this past month, so I thought I'd share my favorite yoga channel. Yoga with Cassandra has loads of videos with all kinds of routines for beginner, intermediate and advanced levels. You can pick a longer routine or mix and match with her 10 minute routines. Cassandra is really relaxing to listen to and she explains the movements really, really well. And by practicing almost daily, I have already noticed some progress. I love the balance and stability routine and the neck and shoulder routine, so I will link those below. On TarotTube, we were spoiled in July with a couple of lovely interviews. Simon spoke to Brian of Blushing Nerd Tarot, which is a relatively new channel I had not discovered yet. And Becca did a lovely interview with Ellie, 
which I thought was so interesting and inspiring. I'll link both videos below, of course. I also went on a little true crime binge by re-watching the complete staircase documentary on Netflix and then binging the new HBO drama series starring Tony Collette and Colin Firth. I then re-watched the Making a Murderer series on Netflix just because that one never fails to blow my mind. Both follow men accused of murder over a long period of time, with both men maintaining their innocence. And it is both intriguing and sad to watch the impact on everyone involved. And when all else failed, I ran around Old England as a ninja viking in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I have been gaming my whole life which was a very weird thing to do for a girl when I grew up. So I'm happy to see gaming has now become so mainstream and accepted, because it is such a lovely and easy way to relax and get lost in a story and this whole imaginary world. And that's something my brain really needs sometimes. Let's move on to books. I couldn't resist getting the Law's Guide to Nature Drawing and Journaling by John Muir Laws, who is, by the way, not related to that other John Muir guy I have mentioned here before. John Muir Laws has written several extensive guides to drawing. I already owned the Law's Guide to Drawing Birds, which helped me improve a bit. John Muir Laws also has a YouTube channel that I will link below, which is just jam-packed with interesting content. But I must say, these guides are also a bit daunting. The amount of skill in this book is so impressive and for a self-taught doodler like me, it can be very intimidating. But I hope I can get over that and see what I can learn from this book. I also got Earth Color by Emma Burley, which is an 8-week art course published by Liminal 11. I already had Soul Color, which is a 10-week watercolor painting course by the same creator. So I decided to pre-order the new book in this series when I came across it last year. Earth Color looks so lovely and is filled with beautiful colors and illustrations. So I'm curious to get started. The last book I got this month was this beautiful hardcover edition of June. I first read June in Dutch in my late teens and it really made an impression on me. It was so epic and intriguing and multi-layered and certain scenes have been engraved in my mind till this day. But I've actually never read the book in English. And seeing the latest movie adaptation really made me wonder how I would experience the story if I would reread it now. Because I expect I will discover even more layers and references I might have missed at 18 years old. So, when I saw this beautiful edition, I couldn't resist. And this book is actually a great segue to the next part, Tarot. Because this month I backed a Kickstarter, Soul by Kokorina. You might know Kokorina from the Divine Feminine Tarot or their other products. And they recently started a Kickstarter to fund their latest tarot deck dedicated to our sun. 
As you can see, the artwork is incredibly modern and abstract. And although I liked it at first glance, I didn't think it was for me. But every time I saw it on Kickstarter, it gave me such June vibes. I finally gave it another look. And found out June was actually one of the inspirations for this deck. So, in the end, I made the decision to back this one. And I'm very happy I did. The campaign is now closed. But you can pre-order the Soul Tarot from Kokorina's website, which I will link below. I actually backed another Kickstarter. And even though technically I backed this one in August, I'm including it here in case you want the opportunity to back it as well. Because the campaign is still going. The Blue Earth Tarot was created by Alison Davies, who also did the Earth Child Tarot. She used a photographic printmaking technique called cyanotype, which I have always found really intriguing. And she tells more about the process of making this deck in this video on her YouTube channel that I will link down below. And again, this one is a lot more abstract than I would usually go for. But I just absolutely love and appreciate the level of skill and hard work that went into this project. And I really love the colors and whole vibe of the end result. So I gladly showed my support for this one by backing the Kickstarter, which will be open until the 10th of September. And those were actually the only decks I got this month. Of course, there are always things on my wish list, but I just don't feel like adding more stuff to my collection at the moment. I have so many beautiful decks to work with already, and adding anything right now would just feel like a complete overwhelm. And I was in a really good space with my decks this past month. It really helped me a lot with working through all of my thoughts and emotions relating to my day job, my mental health and my plans for the future. I can spend hours upon hours journaling and it always helps me calm the storm. And the readings I got this month were very powerful and inspiring and encouraging. For July, I chose three main decks to work with. The How to be a Wildflower deck by Katie Daisy is a lovely 78 card deck full of illustrations and quotes. The cards are actually double sided, so it feels like you get 156 cards. This deck has some serious summer vibes, so July was the perfect month to use this one. combined it with the Roots and Wings Oracle by Cat Riles, which is a very new deck in my collection. This is a lovely indie deck that pairs really well with a lot of other decks, has lovely illustrations and very clear messages. deck of the month was the White Newman Tarot by Elba BG, published by Liminal 11. I completely splurged last year and got myself the limited edition, which is why my copy is called Gilded. The art style and colors in this deck are pure eye candy to me, 
and I love how it creates a whole world of its own. The cards I pulled for July were lovely. Starting with this beautiful Walt Whitman quote from the How to be a Wildflower deck. Afoot and light-hearted, I take to the open road, healthy, free, the world before me. Now I am a way too anxious person to be so optimistic and carefree. Which is exactly why this quote is such a good reminder for me that not all journeys into the unknown are scary and doomed from the start. They can also be full of hope and adventure and opportunity. And it all starts with having the right mindset. From the roots and wings I pulled strength, which I consider to be an invitation to accept the notion that strength can come in many forms. When you decide something is not working for you anymore and you jump off your tower, it is so easy to feel like a failure. When in reality it takes a lot of strength and courage to change your course and to make a new start. Which is something very easy to say to others, but often not so easy to say to yourself. From the White Newman Tarot I pulled the Ten of Cups, which shows a lot more carefree celebrating than I felt like doing this month. But again, it was a great invitation to focus on all the lovely and supportive people I have around me. Because yes, I fell from my tower, but there were so many wonderful people at the bottom waiting to catch me. And in the end? That is something to greatly appreciate. And that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed my July ramblings and I hope you don't mind it was a bit all over the place. Because, well, so am I at the moment and I'm trying to be okay with that. In any case, I want to thank you so much for watching, for liking, for subscribing just for any way you choose to interact. I really appreciate it. I wish you a lovely rest of your day and I hope to see you next time. Bye.